Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Wern's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the flaming fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. Control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. I itch to peel you. To split your skin. To see your skull shine in the light. Little tyrant. <sighs> Lucky for you, I harvested a whole family of living flesh in Rivington at high sun. They will sate my blade thirst tonight. Oh, but tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, my blades will thirst again. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away. The gate is closed, as is Casador. And we are no closer to knowing why that bastard is so obsessed with getting me back. I think we should track down my fellow spawn. I'm not exactly looking forward to a reunion, but perhaps they'll know something. If we can find them, we can force them to tell us what he's been doing since I was gone. And honestly, I imagine they'll be coming for me in the night if I don't. Oh, they'll be here for you, too. Unless Cazadors change their orders, they'll be in the dens of this town, seeking prey. We should get to them first. Then we can make their pretty tongues talk. Too much. I want to believe the gods keep this world bad. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work, guarding some indoorsy type with lots of enemies. Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I like that. Not like that, you know. Just, it felt like a good fit. I kept him safe and he paid me well. Well enough to move my folks into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future, I respected him trusted him and he returned that trust that respect 
His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. The events of the last days weigh heavily upon you. Sleep's rest is slow to come to one whose mind is so full. The Absolute is not a god, but an elder brain controlled by the Chosen of the Dead Three. They mean to use it to take control of the Sword Coast. All who carry the Tadpole are governed by the brain and by extension the Chosen. It will take but one order to transform them into an army of mind flayers. This would have been your fate too, were it not for the astral prison and the mysterious visitor inside of it. With her help, you have uncovered the cult for what it really is. A plan of conquest orchestrated by the gods of death themselves. Together, you have the power to thwart the dead three. If you follow this path to its end, the Elder Brain will not answer to the Chosen. It will answer to you. Will you liberate them from their parasites and their religious delusions? Or will you use the power you gain for your own purposes? A thrill courses through you at the thought. You will not have long to wait. All you need to do now is sleep. But sleep is not for you. Hear me. Gather. The reckoning is upon us. The city thirsts for domination. March. Joy. I need your help. Any moment now, that orb is going to explode.
attack.
Look at me like that. I am a mind flayer. Yes. Without me, you would be a slave to the absolute. It's obscene to owe my life to a damned geek. No more lies, no more tricks. I will have answers. I suppose it was considerate of you not to bring it up before, and I ask that you do not judge me for it now. It's like I said before, I'm just like you. An adventurer, I came from Baldur's Gate, though I was never one to be constrained by circumstance. I longed for more. That longing brought me to Moonrise Towers, on a search for treasure, to a colony of mind flayers who caught me, changed me into what I am now. For years, I served the Elder Brain, the one you know as the Absolute. I was a thrall like any other, but I was fortunate. I broke free and started a new life in my old city. I sustained myself on criminals. Unglamorous, but there are plenty of them. Rarely missed. And they fueled me while I did my work. I had the good fortune to meet Duke Stelmane. We formed a partnership, and through her, I became the governing force behind the Knights of the Shield. The largest mercantile operation in Baldur's Gate. People referred to me as the Emperor. Such was my influence. Though of course they had no idea what I really was. My needs were sated. I was happy for a while. Until my true nature was discovered by the tyrant himself, Lord Gortash. He tore me from my home and brought me back to the brain, where I became a slave once again. A slave he continued to call the Emperor. The name was intended as a slight, to remind me of the heights from which I fell. But I have grown fond of it. It encapsulates well who I've become. Indeed, his hubris knows no bounds. To enslave me, that was his nature. But to enslave an elder brain, a questionable decision. I shall look forward to sharing his downfall with you. Rather them than potential future allies like you. We fought to tame Prince Orpheus, the son of Gith herself. Orpheus? Impossible. He was slain by Shastil Kithrak himself. Quite possible, I assure you. His power has been the source of your continued protection against the voice of the Absolute. The power to disrupt hive mind communication. It is the same power that enabled Orpheus, his mother, to bring about the fall of the Illithid Empire eons ago. 
a power she passed on to him, and that I leveraged for you. When Orpheus's mother left, a usurper took her place. Blacketh declared herself queen of the Githyanki. Blacketh wanted his power, but Orpheus rose against her, and so she sealed him and his honor guard within this prism. Bound by infernal chains, Orpheus could never leave. Bound by duty, his guard never would. They were close to breaking my home on that prince. And if they had succeeded, we would be lost. I am relieved. You have embraced your potential enough that you could help me eliminate them. Alone, Orpheus will be much easier to control. No. Gortash sent me on a mission to retrieve the Astral Prism. I was one of many, but the first to find it. How Gortash or the other Chosen learned of its existence, I do not know. The moment I found it, I felt a change. My free will returning. I followed the feeling inside, and found Orpheus. I realized what the prism was for. Containment. While my body was within the prism's bounds, my mind was free. I could resist the Elder Brain, the Chosen. Better yet, I could plan to overthrow them. All I needed to do was subdue Orpheus and find allies in the outer world. You. Most certainly Orpheus. He is a threat to her reign. Some Githyanki still revere him, in defiance of their teachings. Blacketh was safe as long as they believed him to be dead. But as you can see, he is very much alive. I don't understand. The histories claim the prince was burned to ash in the skies. Your histories are fabrications. The prince was not killed. As you can very well see, he was imprisoned. She kept him this way because she was reluctant to eradicate such power. Power that she might one day wish to take from him. If the Githyanki ever find out what she has done, there will be civil war. Blacketh will be finished. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him. And in so doing, he would doom us both. Even though he is subdued, you feel Orpheus's revulsion. A pulsing hatred that cannot be contained. The Emperor is telling the truth. To him, you are just another wretched illithid. You carry a tadpole. As far as Orpheus is concerned, you are already a lithid, a sworn enemy just like me. I appreciate that, but this is what I am. My original body was destroyed when I transformed. When I first escaped the Elder Brain, I searched for a new vessel, but the longer I inhabited this one, the more it grew on me. I realized that returning to my former self would only impose limitations. Any advantage I could gain by restoring my original appearance, I already had to hand in the form of magic, and that humanoid shape you've come to know. As an Alithid, I have far surpassed who I ever was before. You too should embrace this change. I believe we'll have a better chance of defeating the Elder Brain if you embrace your latent lithid potential. I've been studying you for a while now. I believe I can trigger the next stage of your tadpole's life cycle while continuing to preserve your independence. You have seen what I can do. Imagine yourself with the same strength, the same intelligence, the same devastating beauty. If you let me, I can evolve you. You will be able to do things you never thought were possible. There will be physical alterations, of course, 
but only partial. You will retain most of your current form, and you will soon see that the benefits outweigh any perceived loss. The answer is twofold. One, I can, but it would kill you, as I told you before. Two, why would I? You have done well with the limited form you have, but you would do far better as an illithid. So, do you wish to evolve or not? Skrah! Whatever this geek offers is no gift to you. You continue to surprise me. Your mind is truly something special. Now, hold out your hand. It wants to evolve, but it cannot do so alone. It must commune with another. A growth with painful intensity. It has been starved of life, of purpose. It welcomes your probing like a void waiting to be filled. If you let it, it will evolve you, just as the Emperor said. A tadpole, nurtured by the psionic energy of the astral plane, cocooned here for millennia. It has become extraordinary. A coldness seeps through your veins as the tadpole awakens, its yearning almost unbearable. Your mind is a veritable feast. The tadpole's essence courses through you. Where it touches, your flesh, glands, organs contract and flood with pure thought. You feel different. Your body has never felt more connected. Your mind present in every flex of a joint or muscle. You are exquisite. When your allies see what you can do, I hope you encourage them to try it for themselves. We mustn't lose focus. We need to resume our journey. You heard the Chosen. The Brain has gone to the city, and the army marches to follow. We must not let them reach it. We must find the Brain, and bring it under our control. that Vlakith would destroy and Voss would set free. It is Orpheus, the blood of the mother, the prince of the comet. And even more powerful still, it said he could bring a thousand Githyanki to their knees with one command. Listen close. The Emperor spoke only in half-truth. For you to know the tale of Orpheus, you must know the tale of Gith and of Vlakith. 
Long ago, when we rose up against our gay slavers, Mother Gith made for the Hells to secure an alliance with the Archdevil Tiamat. Tiamat gifted the Githyanki our red dragons. Gith remained in the Hells, and Tiamat's envoy proclaimed Vlakith our ruler. The first Vlakith of many. It is Vlakith 157 whom my people now call Queen. Yes. Our current queen has claimed undeath and reigned for a thousand years. But it was the first whom Orpheus tried to slay. Orpheus was, is, Gith's only son. He led his mother's own honor guard in a coup against Vlakith I. It was Kithrak Voss himself who slayed the prince in vicious battle. Or so the Varshis teach us. Yet the prince of the comet's been with us. Subdued by that repugnant illithid. Should Orpheus go free, he would tear Vlakith's empire to pieces and build new glory from the scraps. Orpheus is not just a Githyanki. He is Mother Gith's blood. Every word Voss spoke, he spoke true. Orpheus is the living proof of the Queen's lies, and the living weapon that conquered our Gaeth slavers. One word from his lips, and the people would doubt. Two words, and they would rage. Three words, and they would bow to the true heir. If the Githyanki are to be free, the Prince of the Comet must lead the way. What about him? The historical slates describe Orpheus as a fearsome, terrible creature, powerful beyond measure and enthralled by the Geich. So mad with power, he'd smash through the Githyanki Empire and deliver the shards to his illithid masters. And glowing with such psionic force that he and his red dragon blazed a trail through the skies, a lethal comet careening towards my people. Lies, of course. Vlakith spread a false image of Orpheus as monstrous betrayer, and her knights as the butchers who sliced him through. She was right to fear him, I'll grant her that. So great is the comet, it could shatter her reign. The Emperor may be loathsome, but it's right. Orpheus can disrupt a gay hive mind. A talent like that makes the Prince a powerful shield and a powerful weapon. Why destroy a weapon like that when you can contain it in a relic and keep it for yourself? A weapon is only an asset for as long as it isn't pointed at you. The means of Vlakith's own end has been ripped away from her. Better to have Orpheus killed than to risk his escape. Better to risk the rise of Illithids than let the Prince of the Comet deny her the godhood she craves. Orpheus' is honor guard, loyal to the end. Trapped by Vlakith in the same prism holding their noble prince, fruitlessly hacking at the sphere that contains him. They see us as Geich, tadpoled husks in the Empress' thrall. I regret their deaths, but I pledge to live as they perished, in the service of Gith's son. Very well. So, there's been a mind flare inside the artifact, or astral prism, the whole time we've had it. Sounds like utter madness, even though I've seen it with my own eyes. The more I learn, the less I understand just why I was sent to retrieve that thing. But it matters little now. I do not serve Shah anymore, nor the Mother Superior. The prism is no longer my mission. Saving my parents is. But I digress. 
Did you want something? must find where Gortash and Orin have established themselves, and take their nether stones. The city is close now. My former peers will be watching, no doubt. Waiting for my return. Be honest. What do you think of the new look? Well, I'm glad someone does. Perhaps I'll get used to it. I have a lot to get used to right now. I hope so. So long as I'm willing to stroll right into the Mother Superior's trap, they have no reason to not tell me where to go. If by warm you perhaps mean a flaming arrow, I doubt they'll attack in public. No, I expect they'll point me in the right direction so I can face my reckoning away from prying eyes. Not quite. Above all else, protecting our base of operations in Baldur's Gate was the reason I had to surrender my memories to begin with. Or at least, that's what I was led to believe. We should look for someone to point me in the right direction. Otherwise, we'll have little recourse but to wander the whole city searching. Worms Crossing is a choke point. If I wanted to intercept a new arrival, I'd find somewhere before the bridge, blend in amongst the crowds, and wait. Most people seeking entry to the city will be refugees. I'd look wherever they're gathering. Um, excuse me, I can't find my mum. She was, um, she was sick. She had spots on her face and hands. She went to go get some herbs, and she was supposed to come back the same day. That was last ten day, though. Um, thank you so much. I don't have anything, and you can't do anything without any coin. I'll pay you back when I find my mum. Really there now. You see the city up on the hill. I'm just a cat. But please, talk to Yenna. I d d don't like talking. N nothing good, I don't think. She was so very sick. M maybe she made like a cat and went off to, to spend a last life. Yenna is my best friend. She's kind. Help her, not me. But please don't. There is so much wrong. Hi. I'm still looking for my mum, but um thank you for helping me. You're really nice. I know it's all but you'll be in a big... Turn back, citizen. No passage in this direction. It's bloodier than a butcher's backyard out there. Piles of dead absolutists, and a few of our own as well. The cultists assaulted the gate, armed to the teeth trying to break in. They nearly had it too, before the steel watch intervened. <laughs> a little more than that. You'll see for yourself soon enough if you head to the city. Down up there. What's that? My, my! 
The fates move in strange and scrumptious ways. I am delighted to see you again. After our little interlude at last light, I was worried you'd gone quite mad. Did it? I'm not so sure. I'm not in the city yet, you see. I'd quite like to get inside. But it's difficult to shuffle your way to the top of the queue when you're, well, as big as an ox. But what if I was smaller, more discreet? Maybe then a kind soul might bring me through, right in their little pocket? Ooh, this day has ended so much better than it started. Now, you don't worry about me. I'll be a good, quiet little apple you can tuck into the corner of your pack, just until we're inside the city walls. Hail, Cyric! I can't wait to get inside. against this tide that threatens to overwhelm us. Please just go home. You're ruining a perfectly uneventful posting with this nonsense. The flaming fists are supposed to protect this good city, but they allow trash and vermin to take our homes and goods. You, you're a true Baldarian, I can tell. You must understand why we need to keep these strays out of our city. Another bleeding heart. Piss off and take it elsewhere. Between you and me, I don't think there are enough flaming fists here for these refugees. Ah, oh, no. You misunderstand. I mean, anyone could be among these refugees. Us Baldurians can't feel safe with so many of them roaming about without proper supervision. <sighs> Let's hope Archduke Gortash can make a difference. You see them over there? Refugees? Ha! Naught but a cover. I know what they really are. Died in the wool agents of the Absolute. Mark my words. Oh, gods, oh, gods. Look, let me live, and I'll say nothing. I swear it. Just leave me and mine alone. No, we pay taxes for you to protect... Oh, gods. Not another protester. Go talk to Nestor if you must. I've got plenty on my plate with these mewling geese. I just lost a wager, thanks to you. Who are you? Someone who bet that you'd never be foolish enough to actually show your face in this city again. But here you are. And the gold in my purse is soon to take flight. There have been whispers about you, sister. About your faith, your loyalty, your company. I can't help but feel the strangest twinge of disgust as I look upon you. Is it true? Has Our Lady forsaken you? I know the truth. I know my parents still live. Tell me where they are and I have no quarrel with you. I'm afraid the quarrel is unavoidable, thanks to you. Now I must report your reappearance. If you are intent on bringing matters to a head, 
and seek out the House of Grief in the Lower City. Though, if I was you, I'd be very tempted to just forget it all and disappear. You have some form of doing so, after all. Donations? Very funny. You can make a donation to the refugees, or you can leave. Well, if you must, I suppose it saves me the walk. But if you're gonna do it, hurry up. But what are you still flapping your lips at me for? Get on. Nesta let you in. Good. Means you'll be further away from me. You did me a real favor clearing all those ghouls out of Moonrise. That old bonebag Ketherick had some fancy junk stashed behind all the cobwebs and piles of gore. Didn't you? Figured we only got the scraps you didn't have the strength to carry. Wish I could tell you. We're stuck out here, but most of the action is beyond Worms Crossing. Would I try to fool a Sharpie like you? Have a look. The place was empty. Keep those thugs away from my family. Denuvia! Get these spotters out of my house now! Arthur, sweetheart, you paid me and my boys to be caravan guards, not cattle wranglers. If you want us to get our hands dirty, it'd be our pleasure. But... That'll be extra. I don't see why I should be explaining myself. It's my property. They are on it. Unlawfully. Look, we needed somewhere to live. This place was empty, and it had walls. I've got children for tears' sake. My point exactly. They're like kobolds. You let one in, and soon the place will be crawling with them. I'm a very magnanimous individual. But this is my home! Either they leave, or I'll make them. Fine, fine. They can stay. Just don't blame me when they turn on you like the mongrels they are. Respect your hustle, sweetheart, but it won't work on me. You've stepped on the guild's toes, and we'd like a little something to make it better. The guild, a loose coalition unifying every criminal outfit in the city under one collective rule, from cut purses to contract killers. Just a little something. Consider it a gesture of goodwill. Smart decision, sweetheart. Well, boys, we did what we were paid for. Let's leave this lot to their misery. In the city, up on the hill. Within its walls than without Martha. At least he not quite sure why you stood up for us like that. But I won't say I'm not grateful. Thanks. And may Torm keep you.
I am. It's been days since my family slept under a roof. So thank you. Good thing you sorted that out. I was this close to chucking a knife right between that trollop's eyes. I was... Threaten us. To threaten the children. Trap. Just as I expected. worth checking off his donations. Looks like his generosity is compromised. here what those are children's toys w which means if a child had picked one up I don't want to think about it how do I know you're not the one who planted those explosives I guess it can't hurt. I'll check up on the rest of the goods. You try and find whoever is responsible for this. Ah! Whatever you need, I can't help you. Even talking is painful right now. After a quick examination, you conclude that your patient is pretending to be wounded. You wonder why. Really? This isn't necessary. I'm sure there are other people that need your help more urgently. Shh! Not so loud. If those lads find out I'm faking, they might go off on their own. They're not ready for that. And frankly, I'd miss them. I don't really have any other friends. And I like those lads. So I think I'll stick around a while more. So, you survived. That's more than many of my kin can say. It's mainly anger that keeps me going. Zevlor was supposed to lead us, but he froze when we needed him most. I, I haven't seen him since the massacre on the road, which is lucky for him. What a sad situation. The once proud tieflings of Elturel. Reduced to beggars. We made it through hell. Twice. 
I know now that as long as Danis and I stick together, we can do anything. We made it alive to Baldur's Gate. Almost, anyway. But I, I, I can't complain. When I look at Bex and realize she's safe, it's hard not to weep from joy. I've heard Althera made her way into the city. Washing my pits, washing my pits. This is the song when I'm... Aye! Could a bloke not get any bleeding privacy around here? Bunch of perverts, the lot of you. Hail, friend. Fine day, isn't it? Forgive me, you're in no mood to talk about the weather. Your journey here was a hard one, no doubt. Is this your first time in Baldur's Gate? It's a fine city, isn't it? No better place to hail from. Used to be you'd arrive knowing you had a full belly and a warm bed waiting for you. Not anymore. These days, there's belly enough to go around. Add the refugees on top and well. Folk aren't feeling too generous. I've been asking myself the same question. I wouldn't be the first to interfere. Some well-to-dos in the city donated enough to see the newcomers right for the time being. Only they didn't bother helping everyone else. Locals going without while strangers feast. It stoked the fire, all right. Some Baldarians are kicking up a fuss round the front of the barn as we speak. If I wasn't wearing this uniform, I'd walk round there and teach him a lesson. They'd never forget. Too bloody right. They've gone soft behind those walls, forgotten what it's like to struggle, living hand to mouth. I say we march round there and slit a few bellies. Remind them how much worse things could be. What do you say? Tell them! I'll cut out their eyes and make them watch! You're the Lick Spittle who crushed the Bone Lord's thrall. Have you come begging, sniffing for our stones? Gortash won't like that. A throat his black hand can't choke the spit from. You'll need to bleed and carve this city if you want to turn him to grave meat. He shivers at the thought. <laughs> When you find the Lordling, tell him Oren is watching. So Oren is a shapeshifter. How long has she been watching? It's not really attacked a child. Costumes don't draw that. Stinks of cheese. Between his piggy toes. How dare you? What in the hell is all of this? A necessity, good sir. The Steel Watch loves pretending sweet Rivington doesn't exist. So we have decided to protect you, dear patrons. <laughs> no need to thank us. You'll be allowed in once I've done this batch. Next! Hello, hello, and welcome to the Circus of the Last Days. The finest extra planar circus there is. Oh, uh, this is Benjamin. Say hi, Benji. Me! Benji here checks all our patrons to make sure none of you are vicious murderers. <laughs> Can't be too careful. But enough of this. 
The circus is a place of joy and distraction, so uh, come inside and forget your worries. Not a problem, dear patron. Benji just has to check if you're a vicious murderer. Benji? <sighs> Who smells like piss and iron? No like. Oh, well, that's a first. Usually I'd allow you in, but in these times, I can take no chances. Move along. No circus for you. Forgive me. <laughs> I must have uh, misspoken. <laughs> Welcome to the circus of the last days. Have fun and be sure to catch the star of our show, Dribbles the Clown. The circus of the last days has returned. See Dryad's Gin and Dribbles the Clown back with a new act. Oh, a circus! How oh, I love the raucous revelry, the goofs and the guffaws! Mm. Mm. You realize she is miming putting on face paint. She has them to sell. beyond your tiny imagination and make your miserable life more bearable. Akabi has traveled across the plains, burning and conquering all. Win the spoils of such conquest. Or, if luck smiles upon you, win the grand prize, the jackpot. No more questions. Spin or don't. Then Akabi pities you. Begone, miserable one. The spongy mortal. Let us see if you have luck's favor. Alas, no jackpot for you, ugly one. But you may have this. You are welcome, putrid one. Return again to try anew. Grand prize, but fear not, grotesque one. Try again, be victorious. 
Your tiny mind has failed to see its true potential. Akabi pities you. The spongy m Let us see if you have luck's favor. Impossible. You thief! You cheated! You! Dare! Enjoy the jackpot, muley cart! Damn that Ginny. Where am I? It's been a long day. Ha <laughs> ha! How did the despicable cheetah enjoy his vacation? Adorable! Be gone! Darling, we have a customer! <clears throat> Is your camp drab? Dreary? Then you have come to the right place. Browse our bespoke stony and bony creations. Or commission a statue in your likeness. It is our most sought-after service. Bony, at your service. <laughs> uh, that there is my darling wife, Stony. Is she not magnificent? <laughs> to think she chose me. Why, I wake up every morning with a smile on my face. Uh, uh, now, what can I do for you? Oh, my wife shall be delighted. Customs are her favorite, particularly when their facial structure is as unique as yours. Tremendous! Stony darling, let us put this towards our getaway in the Moonshay Isles. I'll have your statue shipped to your camp. You shall love it. We guarantee it! Ah, the adventurer! Oh, you shall be thrilled and delighted! I know it! Nothing caught your eye?
Um, hi. It's me, Yenna. You remember me, right? You were really nice to me before, and, um, my mum hasn't come back yet. She might come later. I don't think she's coming. Could we maybe stay here? <sighs> Isn't there a human crest she can join? Hungry little hobgoblin. Want a treato? I has lots of treatos and magics and junks I finds. Uh, don't worry. I only takes junks from dead people. I is nice. <laughs> oh, lots of times. The beasts ate a kiddo the other day. And I got some good stuffs. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, circus is safe. Do not uh, worry. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes! I has lots of stuffs. Ah, uh, Lucille! It's Pose, Grapevine, then Pivot Step. Jacob, you have the grace of my great-grandmother's missing leg. Oh, and Boris, Boris, put some sensuality into those lovely hip bones. I know you have it in you. Step it up. Interrupting a massacre? Merkel, help me. These three make the art of dance look like a ritual sacrifice. Call me Lucretius, ringmaster, necromancer, bringer of the night. Oh, and wine lover extraordinaire. Normally, I'd invite you into my tent for a lovely vintage, but these graceless skellies need my full attention. Enjoy my circus, darling. This city of storm and steel is an endless scream in nature's womb. I have felt no peace here. Until now, your eyes, Stira. There is pain, endless and deep, but also devotion, blazing like the sun. You're in love. Are you not? You are wise to admit it. When it comes to love, vulnerability is armor. Truth, a sword, and trust, a shield. I pray you wield all three, Stira. Bring the one you love to me. I will look into your hearts and see if your love is eternal, or doomed eternally. Love, is it? I hadn't realized I'd bowled you over that much. Give it a try, then. Impress me. Close your eyes, little ones. Be still as stone to earth. And remember to breathe. The bond between you, so tender, so fragile. But do you see it for yourselves? 
Shadowheart. An endless storm surges behind sharp eyes. Listen. Think. From where does Shadowheart draw comfort on a cold, dark night? I see. Are you sure you don't want to quit while you're behind? All affections face their trials. Your bond quivers, but it does not yet break. The heart craves comfort, but needs respect. How does one earn the dark-haired maiden's respect? I would never. There is hollowness between you, something brittle and strained. We must dig deeper, grasp the pain hiding within. Shame sits in the soul of all. To tame it, we must name it. Shadow Heart. What is her deepest shame? I didn't think a little game would sting so much when I agreed to this. But you're right. I suppose I should be grateful. You helped me shed any illusions that you might have been paying attention. Thank you. Your bond is false, and I know why. Because your heart belongs to another. Close your eyes, and she will show herself to you. Gortash knows you are coming. Knows you have the Bone Lord's stone. Do not let him hiss hot air into your worm-weakened brain. <laughs> this wretch following in your worm wake won't help you. Your bond is brittle. The kind the tyrant longs to break. Remember... His throat spits lies, but my blade carves the truth. You will read it on your skin soon enough. She's toying with me. What does she want? Another. Good. is sturdy the lock is old it could be jammed shut so not even a key could open it no coward I thought you a hunter. Wrong. You're prey. Small, sniveling, pathetic. Ooh. Don't get too close, or Crimson here might decide you look tasty. <laughs> My stomach screams. Press your flesh through bars and add blood breaks. Oh. 
The dog is my very best friend. Do you know why? Why? Because with him, anything is possible. Hey! Can we not find a more pleasant amusement? Gouging out our own eyeballs, perhaps? Did you hear about the scarecrow who lost a fight? Oh, you hear that, buddy? We've got ourselves a Debbie Downer. Boo! Thank you to the loud mouth for volunteering for my next trick. Now, where, oh, where are you? The hair on the back of your neck raises as a shiver passes through you. You! My special assistant. Come on up. <gasps> Buddy's been practicing day and night for this next trick. What kind of friend would I be if I spoiled his grand finale? The, the local customs are veiled to me. Are you sure this is wise? Oh, my heart! The enthusiasm is too much! Now, up, up, double sharp! Oh, poor buddy will think you don't like him! Right there! Oak Father, shield me in the trials to come. Now, you're very special, as special as can be. Does anyone know why? special, my friend, because I have a message just for you. Praise the Absolute. So eager to bleed. Is this part of the show? Praise the Absolute. Invenium via. I died 
I will not know failure. Dear, screaming children and oozing corpse, and it's not even my birthday. I thought the Absolute wouldn't dare set foot in my circus. To use such a woeful dribbles impersonator, why, it's downright rude. When you run a plane hopping circus of ragtags and ruffians, few things faze you. Alas, I cannot afford to lose any more staff. Funerals are so very expensive. I need to move the circus. But I cannot leave just yet. Not without Dribbles. He was a star. Customers of every color and creed simply adored him. I need him back, and I'll shower the person who finds him in love, adoration, and adequate compensation. What do you say? I can respect that, and you're in luck, because I am old, darling. Ancient. I have seen stars explode and civilizations fall. Along the way, I happened across items of such power that would make you weep with awe. Find my dribbles. You won't be disappointed. That's the spirit, darling. And remember... I look after those who make me happy. Hmm? Good luck, and thanks ever so much. That's curious. is dead. Oh well. Want a treato? Why? I die, you die, we all die. Big wolf. Have a treato. It'll make it better. I found it by the clown man's tent. Bought a rat for it and everything's. <laughs> it's a, a one of a kind hand with artisanal bite marks. It's worth lots. Mama Lucretia says we family. Suppose that means Dribbles was too. Yeah. But don't tell nobodies I gave it to you for free. Got to protect my reputation as a tough business lord. Yikes and magic for sale. Hello again, my vicious little one. Oh dear. 
Tribble's flesh is near torn asunder. Poor thing was most certainly alive when he was hacked up. Well, that just means this treasure hunt is all the more challenging. Toddle on, darling. There's more of Dribbles to find. Queen Vlakis. Skrull! You are a Sherlock, and still you speak my name. I've seen the captive Orpheus with my own eyes. Spoken to Shestil Kithrak Vos. You lied to us. Enslaved us. The betrayer Vos lies! I have only a moment, and you, Hasharlak, will listen. We are Githyanki. We move mountains. We snuff out stars. We shake the plains! The traitor Voss has lied to you. The heretic prince would shatter us in an instant. The great dominion shrunk to the head of a pin. Can this be true? Is the Githyanki prince really a threat to his own people? Or simply a challenge to Vlakith's rule? Return to the Astral Prism! Slay Orpheus the Pretender! Serve me, and I will ascend you. You will be no mere warrior, nor Kithrak. You will be Barter Vlakith, Commander of Dragons. My only, my chosen. A final chance. Kneel before me. Make your promise. Lazel's thoughts become yours. The sight of Orpheus looms over her mind. Voss's words echo within it. She means to forever turn her back on Vlacketh. I gave you my faith, and you called me traitor. I gave you my life, and you ordered your knights to hunt me. I have witnessed too much, and you have given me too little. Finally, I can see. Orpheus will live, and I will hear his creed. This is my word. Your word is nothing! You! I'm nothing! The Kithraki will bring you. I will tear your flesh from your bones and devour your skull's marrow while you beg for death. I will consume you. I will unmake you. It is done. There is no going back. As long as the Undying Queen reigns, I am never to soar unbound over the Astral Sea, never to cross the One in the Void. As it should be. Better a short life built on truth than immortality woven of lies. Better to unite the Githyanki under a prince who would free their minds and honor their bodies. So why do I feel so bitter? Blackith has upended Lazel's whole existence. Everything she knew to be true, every plan and aspiration she ever held has been painfully ripped away. 
Lazelle's bitterness is born of sadness. She is mourning the loss of the person she once was and can never be again. to know me but in truth she didn't take everything i have what i have gathered for myself i'm more to a new regent a new land and new allies i am known and honored by you the source of my bruises vlaketh cannot unmake she who no longer exists and so from the old battle cries is birthed another Tmar Salar Orpheus must still now forge an Inyeri. Orpheus's will above all. May the comet blaze my path forward. Orpheus's freedom is my want and my need. To deny his freedom would be to deny my own. There will come a time. When I can think about myself beyond the Lich Queen who enslaves the Githyanki and the Prince who would liberate them. But that time won't come until the Prince of the Comet flies again. Vlaketh's left hand and her right. Commander of all dragons, chosen of the Queen Regent. Not since Vlaketh won has a Bart to Vlaketh been anointed. <sighs> Another empty promise. Only a naive fool would believe otherwise. The kind of fool I was not so long ago. We find Voss at Charesse's caress and retrieve the key to releasing the prince. Orpheus tough King Narsin. It hurts. I think this might be it. Soon. Things burning hotter than I knew it could. But look, we've just about made it to the city. That'll do me. Let's go protect it. <sighs> Whatever happens after that is between me and the so called gods. Bit sweaty, but up for whatever's next. Ugh. Thanks, soldier. Can't wait to be home. Anything that comes after that is extra. For a while, after the Shadow Curse was lifted, I felt hope in a way that I hadn't felt in years. I thought that nature would heal and balance between it and civilization could be restored once and for all. Yet since we neared the city, I have seen more and more signs that I was being naive. Refugees, orphans, the downtrodden, all being left behind. Perhaps the Shadow Druids were right in their own twisted way. If such sorrows are the fruits of civilization, perhaps there can be no true balance between it and nature. I hope not. I truly do. But the signs say otherwise. That poor girl, Yena. This city will devour her as sure as any wild predator would do. Be it through malice or just neglect. Her fate will be sealed by this place. Society should be judged based on how they treat their most vulnerable. Baldur's Gate may deserve harsh judgment from what I've seen so far. I wish I knew. Truly. A problem for another day, perhaps. I just hope there is another day. At least we took Yenna in off the streets. But there are many more out there. <sighs> 